Uh, initially, they were happy with that, but they've had to make some changes because of what's happened in the recent events, so we don't quite know uh, when those dates are going to be. The only other thing we can suggest you do is, if you, as I say, if you have any concerns whatsoever or you believe you're being undercut, then you need to either notify us or the local council, because the local council inspectors do have the ability to do an audit at any time on anything that's a full four. So they can do a full four audit. Um, and, and I'm sure some of the council, the big council certainly do. I, know, I think I'm pretty sure Brisbane does, uh, um, pretty much on all the solar systems, don't you? Um, yeah, so, so, and again, that's, you, can, you can imagine that's down to resourcing. I mean, I mean the resources are limited, um, and the amount of work that's going on, obviously, is going to be very difficult to resource that with members. I take on your point, and I'd love to get rid of these guys that are cutting the corners. We want to cut the corners. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I, can, I can actually show you these fines, that what has gone up now is what we've put together, but I can tell you now that under national licensing, they're powder puff. They're powder puff. And a lot of the fines may stay for the first, I think, I think the plan is, is for the, the compliance to stay for the first five years while national licensing is being totally established. Because you have to realise national licensing isn't just plumbing, it's pretty much everything. Taxi driving, you name it. So once they get that up and running, the compliance function that we do as far as fines will, will go over to a national authority. And, and they're muting $50,000 fine licence. Not a thousand, 50,000. So those are the sorts of fines that will come in under a national banner. Obviously as a state, we can't insure those fines. We need to get those fines in. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Thanks very much, Chris. Um, We'll have an opportunity to have more questions for Chris later with the panel, and uh, as I said, we've allocated quite a bit of time for that, so if you want to have a question of Chris, uh, keep it for then. Um, I'd like to thank Chris uh, and just acknowledge the work that he and his team have been doing as the Plumbing Industry Council. It's very important to understand where we've come from, where we are and where we're going, and uh, I, I hear and appreciate the frustration of some, uh, but understand these guys are working to try and make this better for our industry, and they are doing a very good job compared to what we've had in the past. And the work that they've done in the last 12 months, just going throughout all of Queensland, dropping in on jobs, identifying who the guys are that are doing work that presently aren't licensed, issuing those on-the-spot fines has had a significant impact on the industry, and it is a very good start. There's more to be done, and there's more that they will do, but for the minute, um, I'd just like to personally, on behalf of the association, acknowledge the work and the effort that Chris and his team are putting in, and I thank them for that. Chris also mentioned under the national system that the licensing fines are going to go up significantly. You're talking, you know, 10000 for an individual, 50000 100-something thousand for a company. It is going to be scary. With the federal government, uh, the way they implement rules, uh, the fines are going to be significant, and you will just not believe what you're going to see. To that uh, end, uh, because of that, I should say, uh, we've looked as an association to find out how we can assist our members. We're implementing a new IT system, and uh, we'll be talking to our members about making sure that you register with us your employees' uh, licence and expiry dates. I know you'll do it through the PIC, but we're here to look after our members, and we'll provide information back to our members to highlight when the employees' licences are about to become due for renewal so that you have a chance to protect your ass. Because believe me, if you get caught out, it's not just the individual, it's you as the employer or the supervisor that gets caught. Um, we're implementing that new system now, and by the time the national licensing structure is in place, we'll be ready to go. Um, I also thank Chris for not picking me up on my mistake earlier, but I do have to fess up. I mentioned 1st of July was the date for the start for the mandatory endorsement for solar and heat pump. It was the 1st of January. It's already gone, guys. So for those of you who didn't put your hand up, if you're doing any uh, installation, maintenance, repair work for solar and heat pumps, you're now breaking the law if you don't have that endorsement. I uh, suggest you look at doing something about it. And for those of you who do have that endorsement are also looking for doing some repair work associated with the floods, uh, the association has a couple of special registers on our website to assist consumers to find uh, competent, licensed, qualified, endorsed tradesmen in their area that are prepared to help them out with that um, flood repair work. So enough of that little advertisement, and uh, I'd like to introduce Eddie Denman on behalf of Brisbane City Council to address this. Eddie's going to be talking about uh, some of the processes between BCC and urban utilities, but might also make some of the cuff remarks about the uh, handling of the flood. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much, Adrian. Um, I'd just like to thank uh, 
the master plans from inviting us along today. Um, I just want to go through the certificate connection process. A lot of uh, plumbers will say, well, how is that going to affect me? Uh, it's mainly our approval process, but it will affect plumbers who are working on commercial developments. If you're working on a commercial project, with the changes to the Plumbing and Drainage Act on the 1st of July last year, it basically meant that um, a local government must get approval from the water services provider before they can issue a approval for the hydraulic services plans. And that comes under the specific connection process. So I'll just go through that quickly for you. What will happen um, from BCC's end is that we'll have a form that we have to fill out and we basically have to, when the plans come in for approval, we send this form straight off to QEU and we, we say to them, do they grant a certificate of connection approval? The way that system works is that QEU will look at the DA conditions attached to that development and DA means development application approval. So it might be in the development application it needs a new 150 mil sewer connection design and it needs a new 150 mil meter uh, water meter design as well. So QU will look to see whether or not an application has been lodged with them for a new sewer design and an application has been lodged for the new water meter design. Now there are an alternative available to uh, any owner or developer. They can get a registered practicing engineer in Queensland, RPEQ, to do the design for the sewer or the water meter, but they still have to submit that to QU for the lodge connection works to proceed. So that process, as you can imagine, it has to go there. They do the checks and balances. They've got five business days to get that back to us. We've got 20 business days under the Act to uh, approve a plumbing application. We do do a fast track in Brisbane. If you've got less than 50 fixtures, we do it in 10 business days. Um, so it gives us, in a fast track situation, five business days to assess the plans and approve it. So it's a very tight time frame. Where this will impact heavily on um, plumbing contractors, if you're going to go to the site and say, well, I'm going to start, now the plans will take a, a couple of days to get out of cancel, there could be a delay. And the delay would be is if the developer hasn't started down the process of getting the sewer design lodged with QU or getting an RPQ to design it. Because it could take QU three weeks to do the design. That means we will sit out an information request to the uh, applicant saying that the plans cannot be approved until QU gives certificate connection, which is going to delay approval of those plans for three weeks, which potentially could delay your project by three weeks. So we're really working hard. We've done a presentation with the Master uh, sorry, the Association um, to let them know that they've got to start building in this lead time at the start of the job to make sure that they're submitting the plans early, uh, not later in the process. We all know that developments are under pressure and uh, the hydraulics and the plumbing always seems to be the last thing they think about. Everything else is done except for plumbing and they throw it in the last minute. So there are going to be teething problems and we've just kicked this off this week and lo and behold there were teething problems. And I'll go through them in a minute. But just to reconfirm, QU, um, and there's two options. The first option is QU receives payment for construction of a new property sewer connection including the light sewer works, designed for feed quota generator. QU receives payment for the construction of a new water meter assembly, including the light sewer work to be performed by QU. That's the first option. The next option is you get a net registered practice engineer in Queensland, RPQ. He does the design. They, when they do that, they certify the design. They still have to submit it to QU for the light sewer works to be uh, performed. The light sewer works can only be performed by QU. Uh, and it's the same with the, the water meter and light connection works as well. So they have to lodge the water meter design the RPQ with um, QU for the uh, water meter uh, connection works as well. 